This is Family Altar Forum, fondly known as FAV. F-A-F 463. The title of this tape is The Heart Transplant Surgery. The Heart Transplant Surgery. I want to welcome everyone on this platform and to share this homely with us. Thank you for your continued support to this channel, especially those who have subscribed. May you continue to enjoy. And in case you are listening to us for the first time and have not subscribed, kindly press the subscribe button and every time we produce a new homely, YouTube will notify you right on the gadget that you use. I trust that those that have continued with us have continued to enjoy. And the last podcast was a week ago concerning the heart condition. But today we look at the heart transplant surgery that every human being needs to have. You may have noticed that these days we produce only one podcast in a week. We thought it's much better than producing three or producing seven as we used to do there before. So we appreciate your patience and your response to wants this. So kindly be expecting at least one production in the week. This is to afford you time to listen, digest, and possibly share the same with others. You are equally free to comment, to download, and to share with others. Let's now for a moment look at the heart transplant surgery. Why does human heart require a surgery, a transplant surgery? Basically it's because the human heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things and doesn't have a cure unless the one instituted by the creator who made it, and that is God. Our basic principle of scripture comes from Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 to 10, that graphically indicate that human heart is deadly corrupt and as such it requires a transformation and a change. But this change or transformation cannot come through scientists, neither can it come through preachers. Two, it cannot come through any professionalism. It is only the creator of the same that has the magic and the power to transform it. The human heart condition, being sinful therefore and depraved of truth, makes it stony and dead to holiness, righteousness, and to healthy spirituality. In Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26b states this, I quote, I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. That is God through Ezekiel communing with the children of Israel 
that their hearts had become stony. But then he would transform their hearts and make them hearts of flesh. That is the transplant that all along we have been talking about, that we all need this heart transplant. The Jews needed this. And us, we being non-Jews, much more do we require heart transplant. Only God, the creator, can do this transplant of human heart. Religion, apparently, cannot. Preachers, obviously, cannot. Science, definitely, cannot. Human hands and efforts, cannot. It is only God himself. It's creator that is able to institute the transplant of the heart. But God also uses the appointed means to do what he intends. However, human beings are to desire, they are to will and pray to God to undertake the operation from the stony heart to make it fleshy. We all know that there is no way also the scientists and the doctors can take you to theater without having signed necessary documents in case you don't come out of your surgery or operation. You have all your beloved, that is your kin, has to sign documents showing that you agree to any type of surgery being undertaken on you or your beloved. Equally, the heart transplant requires man's contribution. It requires man's desire to have the transplant, the will to have the transplant, and then the prayer for the transplant to be undertaken. Listen to what the second king in Israel had to say. This is King David when he realized that his heart had deceived him. When he realized that his heart had taken him for a ride. Psalm 139 and verse 23 to 24 reads like this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. That was a Jewish king, David, a man whose heart is attested to have been after God. But when he investigated his heart, he realized that there was something wrong in his heart and he acknowledged and needed to have a search on the same by the Creator. And that if there would be anything wrong, and there will always be something wrong, he authorizes that that which is wrong in his heart be taken away from him. This is the kind of attitude we need to have that we don't always think 
that we are on the top of things, even holiness, that we cannot go to God with the claim that we are holy. But before God, we will always be sinners, though forgiven sinners. So David says, search my heart and know. And definitely there is something wrong with me. Remove what is wrong with me was his prayer. So Psalm 139 verse 23 to 24 reveals King, Je King David's wish, desire, and prayer that the surgery should be done. That should be our prayer always for the surgery to take place in our hearts. A change of heart necessitates a change in everything else. That means when your heart transplant is done, it will bring about newness of things and of life in your life. The human heart becomes stony due to wrong choice and seeking own ways, as it was with Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 2, 15 to 17, chapter 3, and then chapter 6, verse 5 to 6. Whenever a man uh, follows his own leads and seeks for a different approach than that which is natural, then he become in need of heart transplant because that indicates a stony heart. The way the standard and the ground rules had been sent and set by humans designs, but human designs to craft their own ways. What I mean by this is that God had already given the rules in the Garden of Eden, but Adam and Eve sought their own approach to things. And it is because of the nature of our hearts that we seek things that are contrary to what the Creator has already instituted. In a approach that changes the natural order of things become injurious and dangerous for humankind. Reverence is made from Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to verse 32. And allow us to read it again. Romans chapter 1 verse 18 to the end, reads like this, that the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godliness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Wickedness suppresses the truth. Verse 19, since what may be known about God's plan is plainly revealed to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. The summary of that verse is that nature teaches us the right way and right things such that we have no excuse. Verse 21 says, For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, for nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile 
and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. This addresses idolatry, having anything besides the living God for worship. 24 says, Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. That is perversion. That is talking about changing the use of nature and devising another way of doing things. 25 says, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever to be praised. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful acts. Even their women exchanged natural relations for natural ones. In the same way, the men who abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. This talks about man to man, woman to woman is unnatural and is perversion. And it comes as a result of man seeking his own ways. Well, read the rest of the story and we'll continue in the next podcast. Maranatha. Amen.